the abundant life series. The abundant life. You can have an abundant life if you claim it. If you're believing for it. There's certain things we need to do. It's, it's kind of like an if but. You know from the Old Testament. But you can live an abundant life. Overwhelming. I'm talking about overflowing. Pressed down and overflowing. Amen. Shaken and pressed down. Overflowing. Abundant life. Last week I think we said. God gave us permission to prosper. Amen. We have permission to prosper. Today I want to talk about the windows. Amen. I want to talk about the windows. This is pretty awesome. But uh. Uh, open windows is, uh, is, uh, is all by itself going to show you some new things. I'm overwhelmed at the amount of people that have either called me, sent private messages, text, or first to first, face to face tell me what God's doing new in their lives it, during this series that we just started, you know. Um, and I, I, it's, that's powerful confirmation that it was a series that we all needed. Amen. And the, and the Spirit's moving. Well, we're going to start with the same Scripture that we have. This will be our third week, John 10.10. 10. And the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and destroy. And I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. More abundantly. And so we've been trying to understand totally what Jesus is talking about when He says that they might have it more abundantly. We're trying to understand that better today as we did last Sunday and the Sunday before so we can really grasp that, hold on to it when Satan tries to get in there. He gets in here all the time. Some of y'all have been sharing your battles with me. Uh, but some of y'all, you got testimonies after testimonies from this last week even. Uh, one guy I prayed with on the phone, and 10 minutes later he sent me a text and said it's been taken care of. Amen. Amen. Just got to go to Copper's Cove to get it. And, and, and that's, that's God. That's all God doing these things, you know. Uh, prayed for him, and he got to the hospital and prayed again, and, and, and God touched him in a blink of an eye. Seriously, just a blink of an eye, and it's totally gone. Blood pressure back to normal. Uh, just, that's awesome. We might have it more abundantly. I want to talk about the open windows from heaven. The open windows from heaven. That's going to be the scripture for this morning that we base this off of. And it's from Malachi 3.10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. <coughs> we got quiet. Some people putting their purses underneath there and they're checking to see if they got their bill phone. Is this prosperity preaching this Sunday. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now. And God is saying, you try me. He's saying, you prove, go ahead and see if, I dare you to do this. Amen. That's what God's doing. He's, he, he, that's bold, and God can be bold, can He? Amen. He says, you go ahead and try me. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. Go ahead and just see if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen. Now, ain't nobody in here been blessed that much yet. I ain't heard nobody say, hold on, I've had enough. Is there anybody here? Raise your hand. You just tell God I've had enough. I don't want no more blessings. Amen. <laughs> See, this, this is a spiritual law. It's a spiritual law that's a promise from God on how to open up the windows of heaven on you. This is a key. This is the kind of prosperity preaching that should be done. Amen. Not give to get, give to get, give to get, give to get. You're going to give and get all right, but not just some money. You're going to get so overwhelmed that you can't receive it all. Not enough room. It's strange to me though that the scripture talks about windows. Because normally you go through a door. For everything. Amen. Especially that. Behold I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door I will come into him and sup with him. Amen. Yes. Glory. And he with me. That's, that's powerful. That's a door. So it's kind of weird that we talk about windows in Malachi. The windows of heaven. But you think about this for a moment. What, what are windows used for? They let light into darkness. Light pierces the darkness. If you open the windows, you know, you open the shutters or move the curtains out of the way, amen, there's a lot more light outside coming in. And so your current circumstances, don't miss this, your current circumstances that you're living in, this dark, perverse room that you might be in, suddenly gets pierced with light and you can see. Amen? Amen? Is his mic on? Yes. Oh. Glory to God. 
So it lets the dark, it lets the, the light in to pierce the darkness. Have you ever tried? I, I like to kind of get up when it's just getting daylight, which my wife wishes the moon, the sun was a lot higher. But, <laughs> but I like to have a little bit of light when I wake up. Or you have to get artificial light. Ooh, you got to create your own light. They don't last very long. You see, yeah, uh-oh, you know, the battery's going to... Artificial light, we need true light. Amen. True light penetrates into the room and you can see what you need to see that's around you that you may not need to be dealing with. Amen? Without light, you fumble around in total darkness. Some of us keep our shutters closed. Some people will leave from here and go back to their, sh their shuttered up rooms in darkness. There's some of you in here, I bet you. Hello. But a window does more than just bring light into darkness. It does a lot more than just bring light into darkness. Glory to God, I believe in that one. Okay, it also gives you a view outside for circumstances. Hello. Because, you know, when you're in your room and you're sitting on the floor and the light comes through. Now, you've got some light in your life and you can see about your current circumstances, but if you want to see where you're going, if you want to see where you can be someday, you've got to get up, take effort, and go to the window and look outside the window and you see some wonderful things, amen? amen. You can see some awesome things that God's got for you, amen? The outside circumstances. You'll get a much clearer understanding of your inside circumstances. See, when we're stuck in this dark room, Seeing outside helps us deal with our inside circumstances. Take, for example, a bunch of Texans go to Indiana. Okay, okay. yeah, we all come down here, don't we? Well, anyway, a bunch of Texans go to Indiana. And they wake up one morning in a dark room. And they got the window open a little bit and the light's coming through. And they see that the reason they're freezing is that there's ice in their water. They don't understand completely, and you Texans can understand this, why there would be ice and water. But when they get up and they walk to the window, they can see that winter came, which we don't have. Amen? Amen. Y'all got that, amen? amen? Glory. Yeah, we mow our yards in December. But see, <laughs> the thing is, is when you're inside that room, don't miss it. It's kind of funny, but, but, but really, if you're inside that room, your current circumstances of being freezing cold and ice in your water, you don't completely understand yet till you get up and take some effort and look outside the window and you see that winter has came. And now you can prepare yourself because you're looking for... The windows of heaven have been opened up and you can look ahead at what you need to be prepared for. You need to put a coat on before you go outside. Amen? You getting this? Put the whole armor of God on before you go outside. Amen? You see, when you look outside you don't just see what's immediately outside you see a lot just like in this picture I mean you got rivers you got forests you've got mountains you get to see it all amen when you look outside the window of your life when you look outside the window that's over your life you get to see all kinds of opportunities and all kinds all kinds of opportunities amen and all kinds of possibilities that are in your life that you didn't know were there the only way you found out is by looking through the window. Opportunities that other people will probably pass by. They didn't see them. Uh, options that other people never even considered because they didn't know they were available. These people that are in that dark room with you that don't, don't see the light that's coming through because their spiritual shutters are still shut. Y'all getting this? Amen. amen. North and South are okay if you're too bashful to say amen. But I love amen. So you get me fired up. Okay, promises and potential that people without open windows never get a chance to see. And we all need to see these opportunities. Amen. Jesus, when he was referring to the Pharisees in Matthew 15, 14, it says, Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. See, sometimes when we're in those dark rooms, we're letting the blind lead the blind. We're listening to those that got things to say that we probably didn't really need to be listening to. Are you all listening to me? Now, Jesus was referring to the religious leaders of the day then. But we all have a responsibility to lift each other up and edify one another. Amen. And if we're not in that kind of if we're not in that kind of company, we're probably in the other kind of company that brings us down. Okay. Amen. Teachers of the scripture who themselves had no ability to see the promises of God, that's what Jesus is talking about here, was trying to teach, and they didn't even understand the responsibilities. It was the blind leading the blind. And when they what happens, they both fall in a ditch. Amen. They both fall in the ditch because there was no vision. And where there's no vision, people perish, right? That's the Word of God. 
There was, there was definitely no spiritual vision at all. And when Malachi speaks of the windows of heaven being open, he is saying that God is going to begin to show you the things that you're missing out on. Amen? Amen? He's, he's going to show you some things that will keep you from falling into that ditch. Amen? If you're in the ditch, He's going to show you some things that will help you get out of that ditch. Amen? If you'll let the windows of heaven be open. For some people, that light is coming into the room. That light's coming into the room and your life can be changed forever. Have you ever been in a ditch? <laughs> Has you, have you ever felt stuck? You know, all that mire and muck that's in the ditch and you can't move around. Ruts that don't let you climb out. Ruts are just a grave with both ends kicked out, you know. You just ain't getting nowhere. Other blind people are in the ditch and they're murmuring about the bad things and why they're in the ditch. You're getting this, right? You're surrounded by all these people in this dark ditch that you're in and they're murmuring about how they've tried before to get out of the ditch and they can't get out of the ditch. So you might as well just give it up. You just can't get out. How many times they've tried. How hard it is. But you know what you need when you find yourself in that ditch. And some of y'all were saying, yeah, you have been and some of you are right now. What do you need to find when you're stuck in a ditch? You need to find someone who has a vision to lead you out of that ditch. And God will provide that if you ask Him. Amen. He will provide you a light through a person or a thing and you will start climbing out of that ditch. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> someone, someone to tell you the truth about your circumstances, this part's going to hurt. I did this uh, with, with a few individuals that are still belong to the church. <laughs> someone to tell you the truth about your circumstances, whether you want to hear it or not. Amen. I was on the phone with a guy last night, and when he, he was crying when I told him, I'm not like your normal preacher. <laughs> I'm going to tell you like it is. That's, I'm here to tell you the truth, preach the truth, unadulterated truth and if you're doing something that ain't right I'm going to let you know amen don't ask me to bless something that ain't of God come up here and say well I want you to bless this and this well I can't do that well the other church would but goodbye someone <laughs> some, someone who will shed light someone who will bring light and pierce the darkness that you're surrounded in so it can come on to you so that you can climb out of that ditch of hell that you're walking in amen we need those heavenly windows opened up in our lives so there will be light, so there will be vision, so there will be perspective and insight into your own situation. Why you're going through what you're going through. Abraham, he is called the father of the faithful. Yeah. Write this down. Hebrews chapter 11. You need to read that today. Amen? Because I ain't got time to preach all that because I, I don't preach more than 30 minutes. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11. And it talks about how faithful it tells you the story of the, of the accounts and the faith that Abraham had in God. But God had to teach Abraham faith. See, some of us want it right now. I want this now or old fooey, you know. <laughs> but you've got to go through some storms to get there, okay? Abraham did. We get to read about that in Genesis, actually. Okay? Is that up there, Genesis? It says, it says now the Lord said unto Abram, it was, that was, that's Abram before Abraham, okay? Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land I will show thee. Now I can just keep on reading. You'd miss something here. He told him to get out of where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. You want to get blessed. Quit staying where you're at. You're in that mire, that's, that ditch that you're stuck in. Yeah, he said your father and your father's house. Get away from your kindred. Somebody need to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. You're letting stuff drag you down. You don't need to let drag you down. How are you going to get out of that ditch if you stay in the country you're in? He said, get out of this country. He said, and then, he says, and I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. Woo, you want, he's talking to you. He's talking to you guys this morning. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I, oh, this is awesome here. I will bless, I will bless them that bless thee. And I will curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. In all the earth. We are descendants of Abraham. Amen. Hello. We are children of God. We have this blessing on us. Yes. You claim it today. Believe it. Yes. It's here. Yes. See look. He told him he's got to get out of the country. And away from his kindred. That, that's rough. See this is the thing about getting those windows open. God tells you how. But we refuse to do it. Somebody probably got a word from God. See, I don't know how many people's here, Randall. 43. There's 43 messages going on right now. There's not one. 
And each one of y'all is going to receive something different. Amen. I've had people come up to me and it's way out in left field. And I'm like, I didn't mean for it to be there. But the Holy Spirit obviously meant for that to mean that to you. Amen. So God's talking to each one of y'all, and some of y'all know that that very part of this message just hit you about you need to get out of the country you're in. Yep. That's right. yep. And you need to get into this other part so the lights can be coming on. Amen? Amen. Amen? Same way with Malachi. He says you need to be paying your tithes. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm not worried about the light staying on. Amen? God's going to take care of that. I'm worried about you getting those blessings so much that you want everybody else to get those blessings. I'm getting them. I got them. Amen. Man, I, was, I had depression this week. I haven't had depression in years. And so I come home, I confided in my wife. I told her, I said, I'm de I'm de I've been depressed all day. And say, what she do? The Pentecostal background. Get everybody together and let's pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, amen. It, it, and it came off, you know. I got a hug from him. Got a hug from Ryland. Next thing you know, I'm cheering up. But I let depression set in. I fight the same stuff y'all fight. Hello. You got to get out of that ditch. Amen. All I had to do was start counting the blessings. As I started counting the blessings, I forgot about why I was even depressed. Amen. Found out it was something stupid. Yeah. First off, it's something you can't do nothing about. Because <laughs> if you were depressed about something you could be doing something about, now you really got to You need to put your big girl panties on and go do something about it. There you go. <laughs> Told you I ain't normal. Anyway. God told Abraham, I'm going to show you a place I want you to live. Now God's telling some folks in here, I got a place for you. You cannot believe, but you got to do it. You got to get up and move. Amen. You got to get your butts out of the way. Amen. You know, but I'm doing this. But I'm doing that. See, y'all thought something else. Y'all dirty. <laughs> but I can't right now. Okay. A place of promise and possibilities. A place where you and your family are going to be blessed. A place of greatness. These are the things God's got in store for all of us. Amen. Amen. Instead of being surrounded by people stuck in a ditch. You're going to be surrounded by people who are blessed. You're going to hear testimonies. You're going to hear testimonies of people that are on fire for God. And that's going to rub off. You, you, you just can't help but get excited. Amen. Mm. Instead of hearing all the murmurings of the ditch, you're going to hear the testimonies of the people who have had the light of the vision on them. And it's going to come on you. Some people who have had miracles happen. People in here in this room have shared their miracles this last week with me. And they'll share it with you. Abraham put his foot Everywhere his foot went, he prospered. You will prosper. Every foot you take. If you're claiming that, you have to. You just got to believe it. Now, you might be thinking you're going to prosper in another way, well, then you're in trouble. You just need to count the blessings that God's got you for prospering. Amen? Amen. Amen. Too many of us men, for sure, look at the pocketbook. You know, we say, well, the, we ain't prospering here, so we got a problem. Well, I got to count my health every day. I'm 56 years old, and I don't take any medications. Amen. No prescriptions. Praise God. Praise God. I'm at work around a bunch of people that are they got their own uh, pharmacy. Amen. I got a guy that sticks his finger three times a day. Man, I am so blessed. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. That's an overwhelming blessing. Thank Glory. Malachi 3.10. How much blessing. How much blessing. This uh, Yahweh Tessabaioth is Hebrew for God of hosts, Lord of hosts, in case you didn't somebody didn't see that down there before anyway it means room enough that's not just talking about quantity it's talking about space it's talking about area it's talking about capacity God wasn't just promising quantity not just the window of finances he was promising to bless us in all different areas of our life Amen. some of us have got blessings we ain't been asked we, we haven't even thanked God or even considered it a blessing Amen. you know and you can sit here and you say, okay, well, my next breath's a blessing. And that is a blessing to have. It's not guaranteed. Amen? Some people think that Malachi 3.10 is just talking about finances. And some people preach it and teach it. And those are the blind people that are leading the blind. He's just not talking about it. He's talking about your home. He wants to overwhelm your home with blessings. That you just, you just over, I mean, overwhelmed, running over with blessings. He wants to, oh, your marriage. Whoo, somebody need to hear that. He wants to overwhelm your marriage to where you're just so on fire for God, the two of you together, this is just, it rubs off on everybody else around. And anybody that's not of God will avoid you. Amen? He wants to, man, he wants to overwhelm the relationships with your family members. And I think everybody in here need to hear that. We've all got family members, our own, not just immediate, but like maybe cousins, nephews, whatever. We've got family members we want God to touch. He will overwhelm you with blessings on that 
by you allowing the windows to be opened. Amen? Your children, your job, those you work with, those you do business with, even those you buy from, just because of the blessings that's on you, they'll bring you blessings. Amen? Amen. Get a discount you didn't even expect. That's God. That's God. Amen. Somebody just give you a motorhome for twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> Amen. 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 It looked like it come out of a time machine with a wax job. Amen. The areas of the ministry that you're involved in, the areas of the ministry that you're involved in, are going to get overwhelmed with blessings. Amen. 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 You see, Malachi 3.10 doesn't say window. Look at it. It says windows. Windows, not window. God doesn't promise to open one window. He promised to open the windows of heaven. All kinds of areas of your life. All kinds of ways. Ways you never imagined before. Ways you never thought possible. In fact, He'll do it in ways that He's never done to anyone else and you're not expecting because you're the first He does it with. Amen. Glory. You think God's done everything He's going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Too many of us live in the past expecting something that happened in the past. God's going to do something special to you now. He's going to pour out a blessing through windows. Plenty of opportunity. New ways at looking at things. New ways at looking at things. I prayed for a brother a while ago. Be able to look at things differently through God's eyes. You want to claim that. If that brother will claim that, He'll leave here changed. Amen? God will allow... We don't understand it. It's supernatural. It makes no sense how that can just suddenly happen. But we start seeing through God's eyes and things are just... We just we, things that we never thought. Amen? Some of this is right up close. But your shutters are closed. It's right here. But your shutters are closed. And all you got to do is ask God to open up the shutters of the windows and the piercing light will come in as soon as you ask Him. And then when that piercing light comes in, you're going to see what's right in front of you that you couldn't see. You're going to have feelings that you couldn't have had. And there's somebody in here that needs that right now. That's in the room and it's dark. They don't know what to do. I'm not talking about even getting up to the window yet. I'm just talking about that you need the light in your life right now. Who are you? Come up here. I ain't going to bow our heads. We ain't going to close our eyes. Who are you? Come on up here. Come here. We'll pray real quick. I beg you. I ain't begging you. So you get on up here, and we're going to pray for you. They got darkness. You want light? Hallelujah. Praise you. See, that's what church is about. Amen. Amen. That's what church is about. Amen. That wasn't in my rehearsals. Glory to God. See, the Holy Spirit's moving right now. And when the Holy Spirit's moving, if you quench the Spirit, then I'm just as in, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. Amen. Is it hot in here? Good. I thought it was just me. Some. Some people just came up and now there's going to be something available to you today. Today it's going to be available. Today it's going to be available. Today it is available. Today it is available. You're going to grab a hold of it today. God's going to show you. You're going to say, wow, I'd never. It's always been there. Amen. That's God. And then there's those that's got to get up and go look out the window. Amen. At what God's got in store. Up front. That needed to. That there's things that need to happen first. Getting the shutters open, amen. And you got light in your life, but you need to go up to the window to see more. And those opportunities can be a long ways off. Now I don't, I don't know about you, but this last scripture 
I mean, I had it up there like three times. It's pretty exciting because the last part says you or uh, there won't be enough. Yeah, I won't be able to flood flood you. Oh, that says flood you with blessings. <laughs> I need to read King James. <laughs> There's not enough. You can't. You get. I want to have so much that I say stop. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Wouldn't you like to be so overwhelmed that you say stop? Go bless Regina. Huh? Stop! Go bless Diana, Lord. Lord, go bless Edwin. Lord, go bless Tammy. Go bless Barry. Stop for a while, Lord. I'm overwhelmed with blessings, Lord. I've had enough of that. Now, I'm not saying stop forever, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Got to throw that mulligan in there, right? <laughs> but wouldn't it be awesome to be so overwhelmed with the blessings? That's what it's saying. You'll be so overwhelmed with all of it. And I, when I was counting my blessings during that depression for a day, I started, I, could, I got on fire. I didn't even have this message yet. I was like, we had other stuff to do and I didn't get to start till yesterday morning on the message. And God, boy, he, he got that fired up, didn't he? Amen. <laughs> in closing, in closing, ask yourself, have you been fumbling around in the dark? Or are you currently fumbling around in the dark? For those that already came up here, the light is coming in the room. And for the rest, the light must be coming in the room because you didn't. So you need to be seeking a new understanding starting today. Amen. That's how we get that abundant life. Some of us, and I'm guilty too, I start focusing on my studies, my biblical studies and getting ready for the sermon, and I start focusing on my knowledge. And that's not what God's saying. He's saying, I will supernaturally show you stuff you've never seen before. You will feel things you've never felt before when you start getting more intimate with me. Amen. And of course, I guess that's why. Is that? It's in, in this one here, Malachi 3.10. Right. That law says, bring that tenth in to the storehouse. And God's making a, a, a law there that, man, I can't, I can't tell you, my wife and I, we was trying to figure out we, we can actually see the difference. We look back and we see we, the awesome blessings that we received when we started doing that. Some of y'all, that may be all it is, that you just got to start doing that for God. Amen? You need to pray about that. I'm amazed sometimes how many people don't see what's right in front of them because the, the, the windows aren't open and I can't explain it to them because it's a spiritual thing. I wonder what God has for your life right now. I want to pray for everybody. Amen. In closing, I'm going to pray for everybody for God to open up, not just the shutters, but get you to the window to see what that opportunity is. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for another Spirit-filled service. I just thank you for your Holy Spirit moving. Lord, I thank you for those that have got light right now in their rooms because they came up and asked for the shutters to be ripped off the, off the house. And Lord, now I pray for each and every one of us, me included, Lord. We all can go to the next level, Lord. And I'm just asking right now that you would provide to each and every one of us to step forward to the window and look out in those li into the window of our life and look at the opportunities and look at, look at the possibilities. Lord, I ask for you to allow us to see the things that we normally don't see. Let us see our family through your eyes. Let us see one another here, the church, uh, w through your eyes. Lord, let us feel differently. Let us, let us uh, 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 become true light for those around us. Lord, let us uh, see those that are in the ditch and help them out of the ditch. And Lord, help us see the things that will help us avoid falling back into the ditch of whatever it is, from anger to whatever it starts with a Z, A to Z. Lord, I just pray for each and every one of us that we're all leaving change for your glory. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.